thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, I'm Jaden Northland, and we also have Cuba uh, Stanley and Jan uh, Benit, who will be joining us as well. Um, we're going to be talking about the latest uh, Piara uh, release, uh, 194, and talking about some of the features, uh, the bug fixes, um, and the special interest of bits of note uh, for this release as well. Um, we will have time for questions uh, towards the end. Um, so please feel free to, to leave a comment um, as it comes to you, and then we'll get to those and address them uh, towards the, the end uh, of, of the webinar. Um, so I'll just give you guys a little bit of time just to join. I see lots of familiar faces, uh, which is great. Um, feel free to put in comments as well um, or to raise uh, questions, like I said, during it, and we, we will get to them. Um, so first is we're going to have uh, Cuba, who's going to be introducing the first parts of this release. Bro, thank you very much. All right, that's get started. I'm going to just stop the video and share my screen real quick. There we go. Okay. So welcome again, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, as Jaden's already said, this is going to be a webinar introducing some of the fantastic new features that we've got in the latest public Piora 5.194 release. Uh, before we begin, if you're attending and you're on Twitter, please make sure to tweet um, about the webinar and about the release using the hashtag Piora194. Feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation in the chat. We'll be answering most of them at the end of each section and then doing more questions at the end of the presentation as well. And as always, we'll be recording the webinar for people to be able to watch after the event. So. Hosts today are myself, Cuba Stanley. I'm an apprentice Java developer with Pyara. And we've also got Jan Burnett, who is one of our Java developers on the team as well. So what are we going to be looking at today? Um, we've got a fair bit to go over, to be honest. Um, the first point we're going to cover is the uh, situation with Jakarta EE and the TCKs there, and also JDK 11 on Pyara server. We're then going to be covering a fantastic new feature that Jan has introduced, which is the monitoring console. Uh, we've got a demo to go with that as well. We're also going to be taking a quick look at the um, ability to use alternative request tracing service implementations with the server now, uh, auto scaling Docker instances, MicroProfile 3.2 upgrades, and the Pyara bomb, which has been introduced with the latest release as well. So talking about JDK 11 and Jakarta EE, Pyara 5.194 is officially Jakarta EE compliant. Our first compliancy came in with 5.193.1 um, and we are continuing to be compliant with this latest release. It is Pyara server full, which is compliant with the TCKs and the one that we run against the TCKs. Um, but that is the case that we are now compliant across the TCKs with that. We are also happy to announce that we are completely JDK 11 production ready. We've spent a lot of time over the past three months doing a lot of testing and optimization to ensure that JDK 11 is stable and will work as expected in production environment. It is also the case that the TCK passes against JDK, JDK 11 as well. So things are all good and golden and compliant across the board with regards to JDK 11 and the Jakarta EE TCKs. So I'm going to hand over to Jan now to talk to you about the new monitoring console he's been working on. Jan, over to you. Yeah, hello everybody. Let me share my screen. So, do you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have been developing Monitoring Console in the past months, and I will give a short demo now. Um, that's mostly covering the basics. I can't, I don't have the time to go into all the details, but I think we can like answer questions later if there are any um, that maybe go into some of the more interesting details. So uh, first, I. Um, Let's see, now we, we don't have any application here. 
I use the command. You can't, I don't think you can see it because I haven't shared the console, but uh, I used the as admin command to, to deploy. And now we see there is the application. Um, and I launch it from there. So as soon as the console is launched, we see some of the metrics and some of those aren't visible yet. And that is because of the configuration. Um, I think uh, a lot of you know about the monitoring configuration. So I have to uh, switch that on. And for, for this demo, we just need the web container and the HTTP and I save it. And then those come up as well. So, so that is something to think about. Um, so the console itself is, is uh, customizable by the user. It's organized in what we call pages. So um, there are some pages uh, that are pre-configured like the core page here. I can switch to HTTP. Um, and then there's also request tracing. We don't have time to look into that because it's like a lot of details there. Um, so these pages are, are fully user customizable. There is a preset that, that is loaded at the beginning, but, but other than that, it's not like a, a special page. So we can go and modify this page if we want, uh, or we can go and create new pages. Um, so I just go and do that, create a new page, give it a name. This is my page now. Um, I uh, add some statistics to it. I want to see CPU usage. Um, so that's a way to, to add uh, something to the page. If we, if we go and add more, we can add another one. Uh, let's see which one. Mm -hmm. Take this one. Um, so then the the uh, page automatically uh, arranges those in, in columns. Um, we can go and change the layout. Um, so we can make it a two column layout, then we can move this over and, and it's automatically trying to scale to take the whole uh, screen area because one of the goals with the console was that we wanted it to be a tool that is useful to put up on a big uh, TV screen. Um, so these two I've chosen are good examples that uh, like the bytes received looking at this like with the raw numbers of bytes isn't very handy to do. Um, so often it's the case that you want to do some configuration here. So I tell, tell it that this, these are in fact bytes um, and then it starts to, to do some automatic uh, conversion here. And, and in, in this case, uh, bytes received, uh, we are polling for data. So the bytes received are just uh, increasing all the time. So such a metric isn't very useful to look at if it's just increasing. So in that case, we might want to look at it like per second. And now we see that it's a very uh, equal amount of data going in every, every uh, two seconds. And that is because uh, we can look at it in the global settings, the refresh rate is two seconds. So if I would go and change this to three, uh, there is, some more requests going on now. And then now we see a different pattern uh, because we have changed the, the only one who is really using the server right now. Um, so this is a way to, to configure it. Uh, I can show a bit more configuration for this one. Um, so CPU usage, that, that would be a percentage. I use uh, percentage and, and in that case, uh, it's useful to put up uh, like 100% uh, as the top level. Um, so in this case, it, 
don't be confused, this is just the usage of the server. So it's not my computer has a, at such a low usage, it's the server has such a low usage. And I, I can show something that will, if I start another instance, this will go up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, maybe I do that quickly. So quickly create another instance. And I'm going to start it. Uh, and now we can see it's going up. And now it makes sense maybe to put in some, some of these uh, statistic lines. So we see it has been up at 100% at some time and, and uh, average is down here. Um, so this is things we can do. We can add such lines. Um, we can make the points visible. Uh, now we see that the second server is up uh, and it's like added to the graph and its data is slowly coming in now. Uh, so we, if we have multiple instances, those appear in the graphs and usually um, the legend shows, shows the different instances. Um, yeah, so there are some more configuration options and then uh, there's even some features uh, where we can put in thresholds. Uh, let's see if I put a threshold. And uh, now they have already gone down, so <laughs> it will not be that interesting. Um, but, but that would be uh, a way to, to say, I have thresholds and uh, if they are exceeded, uh, that, that will be some visual uh, warning. Uh, we can test this here. If I lower those a bit to 30 and 35, uh, you see now we have gone above those and, and this is now shown here. Uh, because we have have exceeded the threshold. So, so this is something we can just add to, to the graphs as well. Um, you see some color options now. You, you can customize the color. Uh, this is because I'm demoing the, the master branch and, and this is something I have recently added. So uh, there is the, the possibility to just change the colors like that. Um, but that is not in the release, the color, the color um, options here and those color options here. But those could be customized as well. Um, yeah, I think, let me just check my list. Um, yeah, there's one more thing I wanted to, to show and that is um, the microprofile metrics, those you get from annotations, uh, uh, those are available as well. So um, we can add one of these uh, and, and they show um, something that, that is maybe confusing at first. So we have system CPU load and that, that has a strange uh, range here on the axis. And that is because it's a decimal and we have a fixed scaling for those. And uh, for decimals, you need to check this. Uh, and now it's in the range zero to one, which is maybe what we would have expected if you know system CPU load. Uh, and then you can go and think, yeah, I couldn't show it like zero to one, but maybe I want to, to make it like as if it is percent, then I scale it up by a factor of 100 and say it's percent and I can do like the usual stuff. Um, and then I have this one. Um, yeah, so when we have pages like this, I, I now messed up this one. Uh, we can just reset this one. Uh, so because there was a preset, we can reset um, pages to those presets. And for the other pages, this one, if I don't like it anymore, I just go and delete it and then it's gone. Uh, we can pause 
uh, at any time if we want. We can uh, continue in different speeds and those are, it's just this setting. And lastly, I talked about um, the using this on a big monitor screen and, and in that case we can use a page rotation so I just put in the time for each page to show and enable the rotation. And then it starts in the background already. So now it, it switched to this one. This one isn't useful now, so I exclude it from the rotation. And now we just uh, rotate between the core page and the HTTP page. So this, this now we could throw on, on a TV screen and it would rotate those pages and we, we see it. Um, our statistics. So uh, overall, you could say we we are on, in the process of like trying to give the user tools so he can throw up the data or the um, yeah the metrics that he is interested in. Uh, so everything is very flexible. Um, that's that's what we try to do here. Um, yeah, and you can I think you can play around with the, with the layout yourself. Um, just stop this. One thing I, I can show is that the layout is um, isn't changing uh, how the page understands itself, how it wants to be. So uh, those that were in the third column now overflow in the second because there are just two. Uh, if I make it one column, it tries to scale everything so it fits on the screen again, but then uh, at some point, you can't make the chart smaller, and and then we we make it so you have to scroll. Uh, but if you go back to like a layout where everything uh, fits as you want it to have it, then they are back to their original position. So should I move that one there and then go to three columns? Uh, it looks like this. So so it always tries to make that uh, kind of automatic for the user. Uh, and you can do things like make this one larger uh, and then the other ones like get pushed uh, like to other places and things like that. Yeah, I think that was the, the short demo. Um, back to Cuba. Okay, brilliant. Um, I just had a few questions from the chat. Um, if you're still available, uh, Jan. Um, yeah. So Alexander Olovsky, he asks, uh, is this JMX ready? Uh, it ha has nothing to do with JMX. I could, maybe that answers the question. Um, it's, uh, we could grab all the values from JMX and we had done that at some point, um, but we found that you have like an awful lot of values uh, metrics that that just a few of them are actually useful. Um, so for now we have disabled that again um, because it just is such a big amount of data that most of those aren't useful. They are available from other places and there is no uh, JMX interface interface to grab this data that we visualize here because the same data is available on JMX. It's, there are a few metrics that might not be there, but generally the way we, we grab data is it's, some, it's available somewhere in the server as some other value, like those that are available as JMX. And we just grab them for here and, and process them and, and make them uh, visual. Okay, brilliant. Um, and there was another chap who asked, uh, Fernando Franzini, and he asked if MicroProfile can start this new monitor. If but I guess it wouldn't matter. If it could start it. I think he's wondering if this is something for other MicroProfile uh, applications maybe, but uh, this is just for Payara and yeah, as a, no, an application. It, it's not connected to, to MicroProfile other than that uh, those metrics are available. Um, there is no, no part in the MicroProfile standard that would allow to make a, like this work with other servers. 
I don't think so. Okay, no problem. Um, there was another question, but I think you answered it. Um, someone was just asking if this was an extension of JMX. Or no, it has an extension of JMX. Yeah, no, it, it hasn't. Uh, okay. As I said, it, it wouldn't be that hard to do, and, and, but, but those, the data should be available already on the JMX uh, somewhere else. Um, so we didn't, we didn't think that this was the main, the main usage wasn't to uh, make that data available to, to get it uh, for other programs. It's really to make it visual here and um, other programs, if they want the data, they can use the JMX we already have. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, I'll pass over to Cuba then. Brilliant, thank you very much both. Pull the presentation back up. Oops, let's not go from the thank you page that way. That would be good. Bear with me one second. There we go, apologies for that folks. Okay, so moving on to the next part of the presentation, custom tracing implementations. Um, something that we've had requested by customers and that we've uh, gone to implement, Pyara server has its own implementation for monitoring your request tracing throughout the server. Um, this is now integrated as well with the monitoring console that Jan has just demonstrated for you. Um, but you might not want to use that. You might already be using Zipkin or Jaeger or some other tracing implementation with your instance of Pyara server. So we've added a new feature to um, the server, which allows you to use alternative tracing methods to uh, keep an eye on the traces that you have going through Pyara server. Um, it's really easy to set up. We've already got two examples available on our GitHub um, in the Pyara examples repository for Zipkin and Jaeger, uh, which you will build with Maven, simply a Maven clean install, and then deploy onto Pyara as a library. And that will then allow you to access all of the metrics surrounding request tracing through your default Zipkin front page or Jaeger front page. If you want to create your own custom one for a different tracing implementation, it follows a very similar structure to the rest of them. Nine times out of 10, it will just be a, creative, a case of creating a wrapper class for um, the implementation of open tracing that your tracing system of choice uses. Next up, auto scaling Docker containers. In the previous Pyara release, we had a large discussion around and large implementation around the uh, introduction of dynamic Docker nodes. And this kind of works as an extension on top of that. The way this works now means that you can completely manage your starting, stopping, and uh, maintaining of instances for Pyara through Docker. So you can, without having to touch the uh, the DAS, DAS on Pyara server or without having to go through the as admin interface on Pyara, you can start up a Docker instance and it will automatically name itself, cluster itself automatically to the server and all basically work just out of the box. Uh, there is a fair bit of documentation on this and if you're interested in this feature, it'd be worth going to the link displayed at the bottom of the screen. Uh, in the Pyara documentation, which walks you through the detailed steps on how to actually get started with this. But it is very easy to get a grasp of. Next up, and quite a large one, is the support for MicroProfile 3.2. Uh, Pyara has been working for a while now to get MicroProfile 3.2 implemented on the system. Uh, there was a issue with the microprofile side of things with microprofile 3.1 being released, which meant that there were breaking changes within microprofile and therefore the version was not really compatible for an upgrade across the board and not just within Pyara. So now that we've managed to get 3.2 um, implemented in Pyara server, we've got all of the upgrades and benefits from microprofile 3.0 and 3.1 in the bundle with that which includes 
support for uh, the open metrics format, which was formerly known as Prometheus format. Uh, there's been removal of unnecessary annotations and deprecated methods and a lot of spec clarification across microprofile metrics in 2.2. The microprofile REST client 1.3 has simplified configuration for multiple client interfaces. There's also now configuration for support for SSL implementations, along with media type defaulting and an improved cleanup of the resources. And microprofile health check 2.0, 2.1, sorry, uh, introduces two new annotations, which are liveliness and readiness, and also adds a new property to disable health procedures on the implementation. And final point that we want to talk about is the introduction of the Pyara bomb. So a lot of applications that are deployed on Pyara or a lot of uh, systems that use Pyara will often need to make use of dependencies that are within Pyara itself and the dependency versions that we use. This Pyara bomb makes that very simple. The example on the right of the screen is an example of how you would uh, set up the bomb within your project. You simply add the bomb as a dependency within the dependency management section of your project and set the version to match the version of Pyara release that you are using. And then any dependencies or repositories that you need to pull down for use in your project, you don't need to specify the version number because it will all be done automatically by use of the bomb. This way, the software that you're creating will always be compatible with Pyara, certainly from the point of view of the um, uh, dependency implementations that we use and we provide. So to close off, there's just a couple more extra points, such as the updates to role mapping implementations. There are now there's now more customization in being able to use specific parts of a role mapping for the deployment group so that you can have, um, say, just the domain name be used to access a certain resource. I've also made some minor enhancements to the EJB invoker and the security of the endpoints that are used there. Um, there's been some changes to the timeout logging system and we've also had a large array of community contributions helping out with bug fixes and various upgrades to new features, upgrades to dependencies. And we're very grateful for all of the contributions that you guys make and very thankful for the support that you in the community give us. So that brings us to the end. Thank you very much for listening. Does anybody else have any more questions? So we've got another question for you, Jan, from Alexander Orlovsky around the monitoring console. Uh, he's asking, can you monitor the JDBC stuff as well? Uh, yes, I'm, I think we haven't added those yet, um, but we plan to at those. Uh, we have this um, slow SQL feature we want to bring to the console. So um, you would you would uh, see metrics on, for example, uh, slow SQL, but you would also get um, like a specific special detail view that would show uh, the details of the slow queries, for example. So um, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think in the, the current release, the, the JDBC isn't uh, enabled, um, but uh, we are in the process of, of um, adding, adding features for that and then they will be enabled and, and will be usable. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And then one more as well. Um, I. Um, well, I don't think this is a feature at the moment, but he's also asking if there's any feature going to be available for uh, pushing notifications to emails or chat channels, uh, for example, in the event that peak performance of server has been reached and the admin needs to be notified. Is there going to be any plans for implementing a feature that will provide those notifications? Yeah. So. Um, right now, I'm in the process of adding uh, a server-side 
um, system for setting up uh, limits. We have seen that we could do that visually, but that, that is really just in the client, a visual help. Um, so I'm in the process of doing a server side thing that then causes um, alerts. And uh, we haven't planned a feature that would forward the alerts to an email, but, but that is really a small addition to do then. So if there is a demand, just, just uh, make noise and, and then I guess I'm getting to implement it. Perfect, brilliant. Thank you very much, Jan. So I think that's all the questions that we've got. I'm gonna hand back over to Jaden for the closing notes. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Um, it's been nice for you guys to have us uh, with us. And if you've got any other questions uh, you wanna ask, uh, but can't think of them at the minute, uh, you can always contact us directly uh, through the website, um, but we're also very active on social. Um, I will be uh, reposting this video on YouTube, so you can always catch it there if maybe you missed a bit in the middle or, or the beginning. Um, and I, I'll send out a link as well to those that registered um, in case they, they missed the, uh, the talk. So thank you very much, guys. I'm going to log off now.